we're going to be talking about the art of Alex Toad. And I mostly know him from his uh, work on the cartoon shows from the 1960s. He started, um, you know, these guys had to have jobs, right? So they, when, when Alex moved from New York to L.A., uh, he needed work. Everyone needs work. So he started with uh, um, some of the animation companies. He does some storyboards for, uh, for a movie about... Uh, some creature in Mars, something like that. Um, so he got his first taste of um, kind of his frustrated movie director period. Then Alex went on to work for a show called Space Angel. And uh, I remember what I called him up one time. Um, I said, Alex, I'm, I'm really a fan of yours and uh, I'm enamored with a show called Space Ghost. He goes, Space Ghost? I thought you were talking about Space Angel. I was, I was proud of that. If you've ever seen Space Angel, it's it's really it's uh, it's not really animation at all. It's mostly a series of still shots, superbly rendered by Alex. Um, Doug Wildey worked on some of the layouts, and so did Jaime Mankin. These are all guys that would later join up with Alex at the Hanna Barbera Studios, <clears throat> with those particular jobs um, dissolved. So by 1965, Alex was in, uh, was recruited by Wildey. <clears throat> Uh, Doug Wiley uh, to work on Johnny Quest and Alex came in pretty much near the middle to the end of Johnny Quest to do some amazing work. I mean Alex was just his work was unbelievable and I'm here to show you why and show you examples of why he's he's as good as he is. Um, uh, I always wondered what Alex worked with what kind of tool he worked as worked in back in the HB days um, and this would have been all through the 60s when he was uh, burning hot, as hot as he ever got. Um, <clears throat> well, I found out an ad in one of the American Artist magazines from 1956. And I'm going to show it to you here. <clears throat> if we get a close-up here, <clears throat> we can we see an ad for something called Flowmaster felt-tip pens. And I'm almost certain this would have been the advent of the magic marker boom that just started in the commercial art world. So um, this is something a lot of people worked with uh, at, when they came out in the, in the mid-1950s. This was actually a little bit before I was born here. Uh, I was born in December 1956, last day of the year, December 31st, and this is May 1956. So just before the dude came out and changed the world as we know it, for the better or worse, these things were um, were being offered by two commercial artists everywhere, and I'm positive this is what he used right here. Um, one of the many, many illustrations of the new 1956 Flowmaster, they call it an art bulletin. Well, that's nonsense. It's a felt-tip pen. And they finally figured out a way to get felt formed in, into the, <clears throat> into the um, form of a, of a, of a pencil-type nib, a very skinny one, and... Uh, use it with magic markers. Now, I'm not, I don't think this stuff is permanent. Um, <clears throat> today, we're lucky enough to have, a billion years later, we're lucky enough to have permanent pens. Um, <clears throat> here's one that I've been using for a long time. It's called a sign pen. And these things are wonderful. Uh, they're made in Japan, of course. And they kind of look like this. And if Alex had had these around, see, they make any shape line at all. Um, this one's a little worn out, but um, this is uh, this is the what, this is what the pen looks like. Um, it's not a Flowmaster; it's a sign pen, Pentel sign pen. So I use those uh, almost exclusively. Once the ones that were made before that went out of business, a common occurrence in the art business. So um, it says it's introducing the pen here. So it was probably literally invented and put on the market in 1956 in May and advertise an American artist. Um, you probably want to know what Alex looks like. Here's Alex. That's Alex Toe. There's a picture of him working that I was trying to look up before we got on here with him working at one of the animation stations that no doubt would have been shot around the mid-1960s. And he was, he was working with a Flowmaster pen and in his left hand, because he was left-handed. Most people don't know that. So that's Alex. Alex, 
besides his comic book work, he was known for creating the character that um, he dismissed over the phone with me, Space Ghost. Space Ghost was a huge influence in my life. Um, the design of it, the music, the sound effects, um, they were six minutes long, these cartoons, and they were sandwiched in between another um, segment called Dino Boy. So there was a half hour worth of this series right here, this show, <clears throat> two Space Ghosts, in between it was a Dino Boy. <clears throat> Mo Gullub <clears throat> was someone that Alex worked with uh, on Johnny Quest and uh, on various uh, comic strips. Because remember, these guys needed work, so they, they would do anything they had to. If they could draw, they were hired. <clears throat> and someone like uh, Alex Toth and Doug Wiley were master artists. So <clears throat> the fact that they were designing these, these cartoons is, um, is no small, small part of what made them look so good. So that's Space Ghost that Alex created and designed. Um, a lot of people don't know what, he, what uh, his work looked like uh, when he sketched it out. Well, I have an example here. This is in the common new um, uh, blue pencil that everyone used back then and still use. This is a very common thing. What people do with a blue pencil, in case anyone's wondering, is they, they block in the figure with blue. And then they, in my case, you would slightly erase it and then go in with a solid uh, HB pencil to uh, tighten the drawing up. But this is a great way to do your thinking in blue pencil. And it's something that I picked up on early in my career in the 1980s and uh, still use it today. I think with the blue, I tighten up with the, uh, with the regular lead, with the HB lead. Let's get into some model sheets here. Ultimately, this is gonna be me showing you how I would break down an Alex Toth figure. That's what this video is all about here. Um, <clears throat> so we're gonna show some examples here. Let's get some nice close-ups here of this, of this model sheet. This is from uh, 1967, March. And um, I was about nine years old, 10 years old by then. <clears throat> Here's a model sheet of uh, Dr. Doom. And uh, the reason I picked this one right here is because of the absolute simplicity of this figure drawing. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever talked to professional artists, but the easiest thing to do when you're drawing figures is to do wild, eccentric, crazy action figures. Now, that's a little different than making somebody just standing there. I think making somebody standing there is one of the hardest things you can do because you have to make it look natural. And I struggle with it and have struggled with it virtually my whole life. Um, but I'm stubborn. I make sure that when I finally get it down, it looks pretty good, um, hopefully. Um, let's move on to another sheet here. Are we getting nice close-ups here? Good. Mr. Producer says, yeah, we're, we're on top of that. Here's another figure right here. Um, this has got a little bit of a superhero flair to it. But yeah, it's, it's uh, these drawings from 1967, 68, and 66, and from just before that on Johnny Quest, were impeccably drawn. I mean, the, the line quality alone and the perfection of the form and the perfection of the line work, where there's not a line out of place, it's just, it's stunning. And uh, that's, why I'm, um, that's why this is part of what I'm, I do with my career at this point, is show you um, not only the examples of people that I've learned from and uh, um, tried to get, um, try to pick up on, on their, their mastery, but the influence of these people is, uh, is a huge part of the work that you see come out of me. Move on to another one here. This is a, this, in this case, this would be a lot easier to draw, this kind of pose right here. It's not straight up and down. It's got a. It's got the knees bent, as you can see, and the actual construction of this guy is very, very simple. But simple is only understood when you when you really work at taking the complex and making it simple. It doesn't come right away. Everyone talks about oh, it breaks down to a very simple form. Well, yes, it does. But to get there, to learn it, to understand it, to assimilate it. <clears throat> And to really be able to use it is not something you pick up overnight. Because if I did, I would have learned this at 12 years old. Um, <clears throat> this is one of the ones I'll be drawing to show you how to deconstruct the figure right here. <clears throat> to show you exactly what's involved. Um, <clears throat> when animators take over and take these model sheets that Alex designed for characters in the show <clears throat> and had to draw them moving.
guys from my generation recognize these little um, twerps right here. This is from Moby Dick. These, was, these were two of the characters that floated around, messing around with a whale for a half hour. Uh, sorry, six minutes. So you can see from this, these figures right here, they're, they're perfect. Um, <clears throat> there was a lot of guys that worked at Hanna-Barbera, but I don't think, other than Doug Wiley, who was much more of a naturalist, um, <clears throat> Alex was interested in getting the exact line and with a slight kind of a um, <clears throat> flavor, of, flavoring of caricature, just a little bit. <clears throat> I mean, these are not the character that Doug Wiley would have drawn, but they're, they're accurate. Both the artists are, are dead on accurate with what they do. The line work is so clean. It's so perfect. Um, <clears throat> Alex, in spite of his hair trigger temper, um, <clears throat> was a master, uh, was easily the best artist at Hanna-Barbera. I don't think anyone could touch this guy. Um, after all these years and all the, all the time, all the decades I've studied him, um, uh, we're just always lagging behind Alex Toth. But the perfection, if you look at these in a mirror right here, <clears throat> that's where I see a lot of the flaws in my drawings. If you were to hold up a mirror to these right here, or do what I always do, something like this, you can see that they're they're precisely drawn from from the reverse view as they are in the front view. Is that easy? If it was, I could do it long before now. Here's uh, three standing figures right here, all of them exactly in the the most natural stance imaginable. Um, what is it about this that's so hard? Um, you pros out there are welcome to uh, chime in and tell me your experiences with drawing a figure this this natural looking. Because we all know it's not easy. A person sitting on a chair is hard. A person sitting on a couch is hard. A person just standing there in, in any one of the natural positions that uh, the human body uh, is versed in is not easy. There's another one, perfectly natural standing poses right here. <clears throat> These are so dead on, it's scary right here. They're a little rigid looking, but this is how people stand right here. A guy who had this kind of personality would look exactly like that. This is another one that we're going to try to uh, break down, uh, not because it's easy, because it's hard. Sounds like John Kennedy. <clears throat> Moving on. Um, <clears throat> Do you know how many people don't understand how to hold a uh, bow and arrow? <clears throat> I took a bow and arrow class in, in uh, college, and um, it's a requisite. If you want to know how bows work, how to line up the arrow and close one eye and <clears throat> shoot it in, into the target reasonably well, <clears throat> this is a dead-on <clears throat> depiction of exactly how to hold that bow. And uh, hands. Do I have to get into hands, how hard those are? <clears throat> hands are funny. They've got these, there's a base to the hand. We all know that. And these three things, four things coming out in this fifth thing called the thumb. Um, <clears throat> the purpose of a hand is to grab. It folds in, the thumb comes over it. <clears throat> They're all hinge joints. Hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint, hinge joint. Uh, and they can rotate too. So you take all that and you try to figure it out and you get a big mess. <clears throat> But we'll be trying to do this later on right here, depending on how much time you, know, you want me to, to devote to this stuff right here. Another perfect figure right there, just standing there. Uh, there wasn't anything Alex couldn't do. So when you get an artist that can do anything, you're, you're talking to uh, a guy you don't want to mess with here. You just want to learn from this guy. And you want to learn from him for the rest of your life. <clears throat> Slight walking posture going on there. Um, <clears throat> never mind that he had to create all these characters. He had to design them. He had to design all the things on their outfits, um, <clears throat> which the animators, uh, I'm told, complained a lot about. There's just too much on this outfit for most animators um, who tend to be a little on the lazy side until the Japanese came in and drew every little rivet there is um, <clears throat> to work on. So, um, <clears throat> But that's something that should, should never be allowed in any business is, is to look at something like this and say it's too hard to animate. Well, you're just going to have to measure up and, and work and do it. This is what artists do. You have to rise to the occasion. That's another one I think I'm going to tackle if I have time. And, of course, there's people that sit down and look very natural. 
This is one of the Alex ones from 1966, August 19th. We just passed August 19th, didn't we? So if we go back way in time to August 19th, 1966, Alex was sitting at the, uh, at the animation board grabbing 12 field paper um, that we all worked on. Uh, that's for the animation and the layouts and the model sheets, all that stuff. You can see from the peg holes in some of these here that they were all taken from the model sheet, the original model sheets. That's why they look so clean. And Alex would have been sitting there with uh, his flow master pen in his, in his left hand and, and, uh, and dashing these off at almost a superhero, a superhuman rate. Um, he had to match Kirby, I think, as far as speed goes. But this is the creative ability. Never mind the speed and never mind um, the total accuracy of these figures. These are incredibly well done drawings. As good as I've ever seen them. So that's my spiel on Alex. Let's, let's, um, let's go about breaking some of these down, uh, these drawings down right here. Um, I think I wanted to mention this one right here from last time. What are we going to bring up about this drawing from, uh, from last time? This was a Kirby drawing when I talked about why Kirby's great and how to break down his figures. Do we have any information on that, Mr. Producer? Um, so at the end of the video, we're going to draw a number from 1 to 70. Uh-huh. 1 through 70, we're going to draw a number, and this is going to be raffled off. Mm -hmm. um, one of the Patreon supporters. To one of the Patreon supporters. These are the guys that really keep us afloat right here. So if you're interested in being a Patreon member, well, that's, that, that's what you want to be, according to me. So let's grab a pencil right here. This is one of those uh, Derwent drawing pencils right here. I'm going to put this right next to it. Uh, what figure do you want me to draw? Let's take a vote here. This one right here or this one? The boy. Okay, we got the boy. <clears throat> Here's what I'm going to do. In fact, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to show you the way that uh, most of us work right here with this blue pencil stuff. Um, what I would do is probably start off like that. That's going to be the parameters of my figure. Um, do I always work like this? No. Sometimes I just do what looks good. But the hardest part about doing a drawing like this is the symmetry on both sides of this thing. It's very easy to, to have one, one side that's a little off from the other one, and that makes it look less than a completely naturalistic figure. If you don't set this head on the, the form, the torso, just right, it's going to be off. And I do, I, I'm, this is something that I work on all the time. Let's look at the feet distance right here. Anyways, this is how Alex worked too. Um, they do uh, the animation business and comic book field is is famous for letting uh, doing its thinking with this uh, this blue pencil right here. Let's grab our um, our actual real pencil here. Try to uh, work in the symmetry here exactly as Alex do, has it here. Um, to the best of my ability, I'm going to do what he's doing here. This is a kid, so he's got a thin neck. Balance, this, balance things from side to side. <clears throat> do first things first. So within this thing is the torso. He's just not showing it. Um, <laughs> he even knows how to draw shoes perfectly. Um, what a pain that is. So this is how I'm breaking down the Alex Toth figure right here. If it looks easy, be assured, it's only 40 years of practice every day of my life. We have someone who commented, beyond just the way they appear, a lot of the characters' personality is conveyed in the images. Well, that would be true. I'm trying to get this hand to look really natural, uh, this arm. It's not the hand, it's the entire arm. How far do the fingers go uh, when you're at a natural position right here? Do they, do they extend really far or, or do they not? Yeah, let's get your comments on what I'm doing here because <clears throat> it's always helpful to get feedback so you know that what you're doing 
is important. Flow hard over there thinks it's important. So literally everything that I'm putting on here is a matter of something very, very simple. But to do it is very, very hard. Okay. Always nice step with pencil or sharpen it close. The head is very symmetrical. From side to side, ears ear, ear to ear, neck to neck, and then the um, the way the clothes work over the figure right here. Alice has got a little indication of where the knees are, and that he shows that by going in a little bit. And that's all that he needs. Maybe a little bit of fold here and there, if he uh, so chooses. But the cut of the clothes, um, it's all hard. And remember, when you're working in the animation business, what are these things really for? They have to be worked on by a hundred different people. And they all have to look, as they love to say in the animation business, like they were done by the same person. <clears throat> I'm going to clean up that chin a little bit just because I don't like it. So let's give a little bit of a little bit of a chisel, chisel there, but mostly it's a boy, so he's got a round face. <clears throat> Are we all happy? Yes, we're all happy. Because that's how I would break down an Alex Toth figure right there. You saw how it was done. <clears throat> you saw that there was a middle line, and you saw that there was a lot of symmetry. I didn't stop. I didn't stop when I was doing my long lines. I brought them all the way to the ground. So everything has to match, okay, from side to side. There's drawing number one, and let's move on to another one here. We're not doing faces, we're not doing uh, studies in that, we're doing figures. And they're all based on uh, why Alex Toth is so good at drawing them. Okay, let's take these two stiff guys right here, these two tough guys. Let's move that to the side. Let's bring this in and see if I can um, if I can do this with any sense of justice whatsoever right here. I'm going to do, um, well, we'll start with this guy right here. Now, the thing to remember is that what you just saw me do earlier, minutes ago, is literally what I'm going to do again. Because these things apply to everything you do. Whether it's um, a building, a car, there is um, there's a sense of... <clears throat> Uh, back and forth and uh, equilibrium among <clears throat> among the uh, the limbs here. First thing I'm going to do besides do the long lines, these are called the long lines right here. The school kind of taught me that. Um, <clears throat> he's also made up of very particular proportions. This guy is not in, he doesn't have the proportions of an old lady right here. <clears throat> he's big, he's strong, he's mean, he's tough. So that center line, to me, is kind of kind of a big deal. He's got massive thighs. Um, these areas down here have a, have a swing to them. And everyone who's practiced endlessly trying to get this stuff down knows that there is a, um, there is a rhythm to these things. Uh, the neck needs to come over a little bit here. A little bit over this way. Otherwise, he's he's bent forward in a way that I don't like. Uh, so yes, guys. After all these years of doing this stuff, here's the waistline. That's where the uh, middle of the uh, <clears throat> of the elbow joint goes. Uh, this indicate hands. Give give a, a general uh, gesture of what they're they're doing here. Okay. <clears throat> Remember, we got the block, we got the fingers, we got the thumb. And it goes like this to get to get a fist. There's one view, there's another, there's that view, and there's this view. <clears throat> That's why <clears throat> real artists, people that are completely devoted to what to what the craft, <clears throat> practice all the time. I've heard people say, "Well, <clears throat> I get done with uh, work at night and I <clears throat> go attend a figure drawing class once a month." 
Well, that's all fun and good, uh, but that's really not going to get you anywhere. It's going to get you somewhere, but how far is it really going to get you? They, you know that answer, by the way, of coming up to an actual drawing. Let's get a black pencil here. Again, this is a, um, a Derwin drawing pencil right here. Watch that center line, guys. And watch the space in between the knees here, too. We have a commenter named Joseph who said, Didn't know Alice was left handed. I always thought Mr. Toth and my wife had something in common creatively. She's left handed, too. Kind of makes me wish I was left handed. Only kind of. Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Uh, it's a right handed world, guys. In fact, uh, Mr. Producer standing behind me here uh, started out left-handed. Well, I cured, I cured her of that very quickly. And now she's right-handed and lives in a right-handed world. Thank God. You're welcome, Steve. Um, belt. These guys always held belts. Now let's finish the drawing off with some sense of competency. Remember, it's side to side, side to side. Get it right. You have to know how arms swing out. This is coming back a little bit. This is coming forward a little bit. We got the wedge like that of the hand. Uh, the, the main knuckle break is in the middle there. The thumb will extend a little bit. Oh, this, this stuff was only easier, but that's part of the challenge. That's why, um, that's why we do what we do here. Because it's hard. People need challenges in life. You guys all know that. We all need challenges. If anything comes too easy, um, are you going to remember it? So here's the head right here. Again, a very, very simple shape. Simple, but not easy to do. I don't find these easy to do at all. I find them, um, you have to focus uh, very, uh, very intensely, which I'm gonna try to do now, uh, even on the face. Alex had a very particular way of drawing things. Uh, uh, the mouth is literally like this right here. That's it. The smaller you draw, the harder it is to get something accurate. The, the mustache uh, and beard is, is an instant way to get recognition of a character. And that's a lot of reasons why these, uh, these designs and animation, uh, simple as they are, uh, incorporate something like, like a mustache or a beard. Alex has got his little spin on this right here. He doesn't have any cheek lines like this coming in. He just has, you know, this headpiece right here. All these things have to be invented. Do they come out of nowhere? Well, no, they don't. We got a comment that says, I don't know about anyone else, but drawing from Toast's character sheets is a humbling experience. No lines wasted, and everything is exactly where it should be. Uh, indeed, yes. This this arm should be a little bit thicker right here. Remember, I'm going from side to side. I'm looking at this arm, and it needs to be <clears throat> in keeping with um, the other arm. One arm is not going to be skinnier than the other. One arm is not going to be longer. We're going to block this in real quickly right here to show... <clears throat> I do a little, little invention on my own here. I practice, uh, for, for you guys that want to know how often I practice, half my life is spent practicing. And always has been. I just like to practice. So there's, uh, <clears throat> there's Alex number two right there. You guys want to see more?
This symmetry thing looks easy, but it is, it is not easy. If it was easy, honestly, I think we'd find half the guys, 90% uh, people in the business that could uh, <coughs> draw figures as graceful as this right here. Okay, so this guy's, this, this henchman here is done. Let's move him to the side. Let's pick a really hard one, as if that one wasn't hard, right? Okay, the bow guy. Yeah. All right. Well, this is really going to put me to the test here. The bow guy. Break time. This stuff is supposed to be an energy drink, but... <clears throat> I'm still looking for that energy. Okay, guys, let's just for the fun of it use a red pencil here. There's no reason not to. There's no reason that you can't use any color you want. These are color erase pencils right here. <coughs> Which I find to be anything but erasable. Okay, you see that, guys? Can you guys see that stuff right there? <coughs> Those very, very thin red lines and very, very light. Um, I'm going to measure across right here and get hopefully what I determined to be the uh, wideness of the stance right here. These are flat against the ground. And this is literally <clears throat> shaped like this right here. There's, if there's any kind of a in and out in the waist, it's almost uh, imperceptible. Uh, this is very important that you guys study this guy here if you want to be really good at what you do. Um, all the guys that came before us, they're our teachers. You see how I broke down that head? <clears throat> Sketchy as it is, that's literally what he comes down to right there. And he's got the center line to put the features in, which I'll focus on in a, in a little bit there. Um, I told you guys that I think <laughs> doing a pose like this <clears throat> with a bow is um, is hard, very hard. Uh, <clears throat> remember, you can do this this line swing here to get to get kind of um, accurate uh, location points. <clears throat> Even without the bow in his hand. Um, if he looks at all stiff at this stage right here, you don't have it. Uh, in fact, that is um, virtually an exact, an exact quote from Alex Toth himself when I met him in San Diego in 1984. <clears throat> I met Alex. He was in a reasonably um, civil mood. And uh, this is before his wife, Gaila, died, so he was, uh, he was approachable. Uh, the the line of the of the bow that's kind of got a figure in there. So I'm just kind of sketching away to make sure I can get something reasonable right here. Um, let's erase this distracting line right here. So you see what I've got there. This is literally what it comes down to. And the only reason I can do it even half as good as this, even half as good as Alex, is because I've studied, studied, studied. So let's try to be really bold here and go in <clears throat> just on a figure that is broken down this loosely right here and, uh, and take it from here. Symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. Is this guy a bad guy? Well, look at the way he's designed. I love it when leads break. Let's not sharpen it so much. That's the shape of his nose. It has to be simple. It has to be. Um, <clears throat> it has to be characteristics of a certain uh, personality type. Again, the mustache, very identifiable <clears throat> part of this guy right here. 
let's change those eyes a little bit. They're, uh, they should be going up a little more. This is why we have erasers, people. And plus, the eyes go up a little bit more. They're, they're literally, uh, they swing up way high. And he's off, he's looking to the other side just a little bit there. So if we're going to re reinforce the lines, we're going to get something like this right here. <clears throat> bring the neck down. Bring this across, okay? This thing, this line comes, intersects with the, uh, with the beard there, okay? Guys, we need more questions. <clears throat> so um, let me have it. You're here to learn. I'm here to explain. So write in with your questions. This is a communal effort, people. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> you see how this literally carries down to here? This is amazing. This is what a real artist um, learns very quickly um, when you're when you're trained well. And uh, Alex was, uh, I think, a lot of it, what he did was uh, was uh, was trained just by personal experience of working in the field. Um, my own personal. Uh, schooling has been massive. I have done, I have worked, um, uh, I've attended dozens of schools, had dozens of uh, workshops. Look at the, the subtlety in this, in this foot right here. Uh, he understands form uh, as good as anyone who ever held a pencil. He's even, he's even got that instep thing going on there. <clears throat> And now for the really easy part, which is going to be the hands. Um, same thing here. We're going to try to get the longest line possible. This is some kind of a, um, a wristband of some kind. I'm working around the hands because the hands are so complex. I want to make sure that I have a chance to really understand them. Here's where the main knuckle is, and they, um, I'm going to caricature, caricature these fingers a little bit here. We, uh, people that know how to shoot bows know all, know all about this kind of stuff. So here's, let's get the, uh, let's try to get the, um, the main um, base in here of the hand, or at least try to figure it out. The thumb, the thumb is to the side there. We don't need uh, nails, but it um, doesn't hurt, I suppose. We have a question that says, do you think he had a very specific animal in mind when he designed that face? Because it's very cat-like. Well, yeah, you, 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 you take anything that there is and, and, and uh, base it on that. Um, yeah, we all know that dicks are evil, so no doubt Alex was thinking of precisely that when he drew this right here. Um, this is going to be involved a little bit of drawing through stuff right here. So here's the base of the hand right here. The fingers go on a little bit, they all go out, and they wrap around this particular thing. This pinky comes out a little bit more. This goes, <clears throat> keep these fingers uh, with the right thickness here, okay? So it's, uh, it's holding something, okay? This goes up to here. Damn that bricking. Do they make pencils like they used to? I don't know. But it is a very good pencil. So let's concentrate very, very. Um... Now, as you guys know. Um... Oh, yeah, the arrow. I almost forgot about the arrow. It has to come right here. Knowing how um, these things work. It has to come right in between those two fingers. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Uh, 
Good thing we have, still have a reasonably acute memory here. So this is the hard part, and I'm showing you how to do the hard part so it'll be easier for you the next time or the first time you do it. This is a flat thing right here that gets skinnier. Alex knows form like nobody's business. So let's bring this. Um, I think it, if this is the center of the bow, it would be something like this. And this is a flat thing. This is looks this looks round. It looks round because this thing gives it away right here. So he's grabbing onto something round. This is flat. From the side view, it looks like this right here. Okay. This thing right here, the handle is round. Okay, he's got that? Good. Glad to hear it. Someone's asking, do you have a favorite TOF animated project or design? Um well, anyone that knows me over the years uh, knows that um, the, uh, the show that most influenced me for uh, comic book design, everything, is uh, Space Coast. And Alex Toth designed that show. Now, you can see I've got a little bit of uh, a screw-up going in here. Um, you see the arrow from here, or the bow from here to there. I've got much more of a length thing, a length thing going on there. And this actually goes under. So you see, I'm having to figure this out as I draw it, okay? Now, later on, after enough, enough complaints from uh, <clears throat> the lazy animators, um, Alex was asked to simplify even more and more and more. And the more they, they had to recruit people um, <clears throat> into the, um, the halls of HB to keep up with their demand for, uh, for product, love that word. Um, they had to hire a lot more people and a lot of those people that came in were lazy, really lazy. Alex recounts the time when somebody came in looking like um, Droopy, the little white blowhard that you see um, in the cartoons. And of course we can't forget the, um, what is this called, the quiver or something? Well, whatever it's called, draw through, go ahead and draw through it and show exactly how it rests in this perspective against this guy right here. Um, Alex, oh, I, I love it. Alex even has how this thing is. Um, so there's a little ring, ring, a little circular thing right there that this stuff uses to, to hang on to his body. So you, you see I'm drawing through there. Eventually you're going to be erasing things like this. But don't be afraid to draw through stuff. The question we got is, do you see Eisner in the pose? An early spirit splash? No, I don't. Alex uh, Eisner is a completely different artist that, I, that I've, I've seen uh, than Alex, Alex Toth. And is there a reference you're using, uh, is the reference you're using some kind of industry standard? Uh, what reference? <clears throat> I don't know what you mean because I'm, I'm just working from the uh, Toast model sheets here. I can't stay any incomplete things. Um, <clears throat> this goes like, let's see, beep, 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 beep. <clears throat> so, um, this arm is a little long right here, otherwise it, it wouldn't be working like that. Um, uh, study a bow uh, and the arrows that go in, into it. There's a, there should be a little notch here too. See, I'm gonna mean my mean my directions. Um, okay, you know what? Um, it's it's wrong. This is wrong. <clears throat> it goes under. This goes under. So when you bring it up like this, it's on the right hand side of uh, of the um, of the bow. Um, hands when you do them, even when they're simple like this, the reason the guy is so good at drawing them is because he understands how they work. And that's um, 
That is not easy. Yeah, good old Alex, there's nothing he couldn't do. And that's why I study him. And that's why we're going over this today. The more I can impart to you guys to how these things work, the better off the, the entire business is going to be. We probably have a little bit of a, uh, of a cuff going on there. Okay, there you go. There's the bow handler right there. And his eyes are still not up there enough. This guy is really evil. I have him just moderately evil. Next. Oh, what do we have here? Oh, yeah. So I showed you this earlier right here. This is uh, Alex working in his blue pencil thing right here. Turn this upside down. You can see his, um, his lettering, his marker lettering right there. Even the name of the, the pen that he used to do the marking, Cerebol. It's probably be some kind of a ballpoint thing. Uh, there's a ball at the end of the the um, the tip that would roll, so that was that's why it was called a uh, ball tip pen. <clears throat> this is done a blue pencil, as you can see, but it's all there. It would take almost nothing for someone like Alex um, to go in there and completely tighten it up and uh, work his wonders with that. You guys want me to keep going? You know, the comment that says. You would think with this minimal line, you would think with this minimal line use, there would be a lack of weight to his figures, but everything has some weight and force. Uh, that's all true. That's uh, guy pointed out that uh, these figures have a lot of weight to them. Um, that's something you hear the minute you enter the field. The thing has got to look like it has actual weight to it. And a question that says, when did Toth? Moved to that thick square marker. <coughs> he never lost the line or dynamic in doing so. Um, Alex continued with markers throughout his entire life. Um, he wasn't averse to brush and pen. He just preferred markers. He used uh, pen and brush <coughs> a lot of times in the Zorro work from the nineteen late nineteen fifties, early sixties, and on occasion other things like that. But. Um, <coughs> He, the reason he drew with markers is because he felt more comfortable uh, drawing with them. So he, if he had to put a bold ink line to make the work re more reproducible, <clears throat> then he would use uh, he would use markers. Problem with markers, and he, he found this out quickly enough, if you use something like a Sharpie <clears throat> and you try to wipe that out, um, be ready to jump off a bridge rather than try to fix that stuff because it is, it is a mess. Um, no whiteout works over a marker. And uh, Alex would talk about that often when he uh, went on about uh, the virtue and advantages and disadvantages of using markers when he inked work. But this is done with, uh, with all marker right here. This is done almost, uh, I can almost bet money on the, the Flowmaster tip uh, marker that came out in 1956. So let's give, let's give Steve Root a little break right here. Well, he summons the energy up to go at it one more time. I think this is the last one I'm going to do for today, uh, unless we get a lot of people writing in uh, with solid encouragement to keep going and completely burn out. I'll probably stop with this one, uh, this one right here. Got a commenter that says, Yes, I would be interested in hearing about why model sheets are created and how they're used. <clears throat> okay, well. If you'll permit me, I'm going to go grab a model sheet. Okay, we're back. This is a model sheet. Let's just put it up there so you can see it cleanly. Um, this is one of the many, many Alex Toth model sheets that he did for the cartoon series in the mid-60s. Um, I'm told he did 11 of these a day. I could do about one or two. Um, let alone to design these things the way they are. The the mastery of, uh, of control of drawing is is 100%. There's literally nothing about these things that could be improved. That's how good this guy was. And he was, Alex was probably in his mid-30s when he did this stuff. Mid-30s tends to be a time when <clears throat> um, you're working in all cylinders, as I like to call it. But not only did he have to draw them up, he had to create these characters from the scripts that he was, he was given. And there was a time when Alex um, Alex decided that uh, in order to make these things go faster, 
he would have the script writer, simple as these scripts were, uh, to include all the props, all the characters, with a description right next to them on the just before the script started. So he would know exactly who to try to uh, draw up and create and invent <clears throat> to do the model sheets with. Um, these are anything but dashed off. These are incredibly well. Uh, the draftsmanship is perfect. <clears throat> the, the, the line quality is perfect. The design ingenuity is amazing. And to, and to <clears throat> create these things and, you know, actually make them like they, they could actually move. That's a serious contender for uh, being, being the smartest guy on earth as an artist. He had to draw these characters from all views. Um, that's something that um, um, you guys that work in the animation business know how hard that is to, to do a really unique looking character and be able to turn him in the round so that you think of him not as a flat object, but as an actual three-dimensional object. And he did 11 of these a day. I don't even see how it's possible, but um, based on the dates, this one here is from uh, April 10th, 1967. He dated all these right here because that was important. If I was doing something like these these eyes and the mouth, I'd probably go over the, the, over the, the things a little too much and screw it up and get black in here someplace. Alex, with his left hand working at capacity, um, was literally perfect. Uh, the dimension, this thing going back in space and coming out the way it is, this thing coming where it is, learning how to uh, make joints that pivot like that, that's all part of it right there. To make a, a weapon that looks cool and to make it simple for the uh, people that follow him on uh, with the animation and the layouts, that's a model sheet. Turn it around and see that he used a really thick black marker for the heavy blacks. But the other line work was done with a Flowmaster uh, marker. Okay, last drawing of the day here, guys. Um, <clears throat> let's do this one because it's hard. <clears throat> you can see right here a little scribble. And what that what that means, I've come to know, is, is OKJB. That means Joe Barbera, the guy in charge of all the art uh, that went in through uh, the cartoons back then, okayed it. <clears throat> Only on the rarest occasions did Alex ever uh, get, get something sent back. Um, I think you know how this works by now, guys. In fact, let's just take the head off right here. Let's just, let's just focus entirely on the gesture of the body. When I met Alex Toth in 1984, I said, Alex, look, uh, I need some help on some stuff. And boy, did I need help. I said, come on over here to my table, and I want to show you what I'm working on here that you know much better than anyone else. I said, I'm trying to, trying to draw these gestures right here and to make them look natural. Something I'm attempting to do as we um, as we watch this video right here, <clears throat> and I said, "What do you think of this drawing that I've done here?" And he he looks at it and says, "If you don't have it here, meaning this part of it right here without any detail, but the big structure working right, you don't have it." Let that sink in, guys. Got a commenter that says. Thank you for these. I'm really learning. Before you end, could you do one with Toth lighting? I'm trying to figure it out. You're phenomenal. Alex rocks too. Uh, Alex what? Alex rocks too. Yeah, he does. Alex rocks. <clears throat> um, this is another great thing about my, my generation. I was, um, really the time I was born is the, is the, the, the time, to, time to have been born because I got to meet everyone from this uh, silver age of comic book art and some of the golden agers too. These hands are tough. I, the first thing that I, that I really should be doing is the belt. And then, because the hands are, are going according to how the belt works here. Bring it across. I'm going to bring this down a little bit. It looks, it looks a little forced. Uh, not Alex's drawing. It looks perfect right here. 
This should come in a little bit right here. And we should have something that's um, hopefully going to work. Let's put the clothes over him. <clears throat> Might be kind of uh, smart to use red in this case so I can see how it separates. <clears throat> it comes in just below knee, le knee level here. And this thing rides up pretty high. <clears throat> the head shape is that of a boy. The eyes are about there. They're a little low in the head. The noses are small and undeveloped from what they're going to be when they grow up and get big noses. He's got a, he's got a, uh, a, a little bit of a Middle Eastern thing going on here, which is exactly the way he should be. <clears throat> the basic shape of the head, how easy is it? Well, try it, guys. Take one of his model sheets. Um, everything is online these days. You all know that. And try drawing it. So we got, <clears throat> we have to construct the head as though it's, uh, it's, uh, that the hair and the ears and the hat aren't, <clears throat> they have to be, they have to be drawn in uh, with the big forms in first. They have, they have to be done like that. And remember, <clears throat> these are model sheets that everyone at the Hanna-Barra uh, Studios had to work from right here. So let's try going in there um, before everything's really been worked out. There's the wedge of the hand right there. The fingers come in. They um, probably go around a little bit like that kind of a thing. There's the end of the wrist. Um, I like to block things in very um, specifically so I, so I know exactly what I'm doing right here. I don't want to fake this thing right here without knowing exactly how it's, it's supposed to work. Um, hands working over a belt thing like this. Um, they're like everything else you're looking at here. They're, um, try it to see how, how easy or hard it is. If I struggle with it uh, and you don't, uh, you must be some kind of a genius. Here's the middle line. There's always going to be a middle line. And through that middle line, you're going to be able to find out <clears throat> how everything goes from side to side. Uh, the folds make this thing. What you're looking at right here is something from the above. Looks kind of, kind of like that. That's where these things go in and out based on the um, uh, how, how, how vo vo voluminous the, the uh, uh, fabric is. Let's see, this one come, come, comes down kind of like that. So let's uh, let's modify that. Here, that thing goes around. Good old Alex. Not capable of doing a bad drawing if he tried. I have a question that says, did Wildy and Toast get along well or even interact much? Um, well, it was uh, anyone that says they got along well with Alex uh, must be have a, de a degree in psychiatry. Um, <clears throat> no, they didn't get along. Um, uh, Doug, having met both these guys, um, both these guys had a uh, kind of a uh, <clears throat> cantankerous side to their, their character. And you, make, you get two guys in a room like that, they, <laughs> the people that knew them said they would circle each other. Alex and, um, and Wildy, but they had a lot of mutual respect because they could draw and you can't take, you can't take that away from anyone. If somebody knows how to do that. Um, they know how to do it. And whoever's best at what they do is going to get, uh, it's going to get the QB doll. Sky, do you guys see how I'm working this here? This is with 40 years of experience that uh, it's still uh, something I have to focus on very deeply right here. 
in order to get it right. Um, during that private uh, conversation with the, the uh, Mr. Producer here, we were talking about right after this, we have to, uh, even this stuff works right here. Incredible. Um, we're going to announce the winner of the raffle. So that's coming up. And the drawing we're going to be releasing from that is this one right here that we did last week when we were talking about the genius of Jack Kirby. We have 70 names to draw from, literally, as I draw. And the lucky guy is going to get that drawing. That's why we raffle these things off. Even the guy's nostrils are very specific. If I was at Hanna-Barbera Studios and it was 1966, and I had to animate this stuff or do layouts. Love that. These eyes are a little bit too, too big. So honestly, I would have to erase those eyes and uh, really nail it. This thing goes around the head. You know, if these little ins and outs are too, uh, are too particular for you, <clears throat> then generalize them. Go from the go from the very general. Let's see if I can get these eyes better here. The look in the eyes. is kind of a big deal. That's a little better. <clears throat> a little better. Someone is asking, Steve, have you watched Batman <clears throat> the Crusader? And if so, what do you think? Um, I assume that's uh, one of the new animated Batmans. I have not seen that, no. <clears throat> uh, the Batman show is... Uh, <clears throat> I'm not a, I've never been a fan of overseas animation. It looks overseas. It looks, it looks manga. So I am not a fan of that kind of stuff. Um, my roots uh, are precisely what you're looking at here, uh, the early Hanna-Barbera days. That's where uh, most of the design work on Nexus comes from, among other shows. <clears throat> that also took place around that time. Let's block in the hair. Just to give ourselves a fighting chance, it's something that uh, hopefully will resemble us when I get done. Uh, Alex told had to design every last thing in here. He did had. Uh, it's one thing to to design something <coughs> that looks good. It's another thing to be able to draw it fast. So. <coughs> Um, this extends a little too far right here, this mouth. If I want to make it look like him, <clears throat> the mouth can't be that wide. So this look at the nice, bold, totally assertive way that Alex would, um, <clears throat> would block these in like this. Now, there's some blacks in here, but uh, is, is it a big deal? Not really. This thing comes up quite a bit. Uh, I think I made the arms a little too long. But that's okay. Let's, let's just, uh, I'm not going to say fake it until you make it. I hate that phrase. We have a question that is asking, yeah. was Dan Spiegel another animation artist as well as a comic book artist? Uh, Dan Spiegel um, uh, worked at Gold Key a lot. I, I, I never, I, if he worked in the animation business actually working in it, it's news to me. I've never seen a model sheet from him. I've never seen work that uh, would reflect the guy that had um, worked in the business. Um, I heard about Dan Spiegel. He was one of the nicest guys that I ever met. He had a daughter named Carrie who was a real sweetheart. And uh, those are my memories that go back to the um, mid-80s. 
Uh, Alex, Alex understood everything about art, everything. He understand folds. Um, he understand how to make how, how to make them simple. And we're all just trying to pick up the pieces after learning from him. So um, this comes down a little bit like this. It swings up. According to perspective, this this has a little bit of a seep, seeping through thing going on there. And that is the lesson for today, guys. It's time for the instep. It's time right now for the uh, the raffle. Who is going to be the lucky winner? Okay. A-T-S-R. Let's, let's pick one of the, um, let's pick a number right here. <clears throat> one out of 70, right? Okay, one out of 70 is going to be the lucky winner right here. <clears throat> that chin's a little too long. Ah. See, nothing's easy, guys. Get your hand in the right position right here, and you'll, uh... okay, that's a little better. You can't slop off on anything, guys. You try to do that, you're in trouble. Okay, there's my version of uh, Mr. Aladdin. <clears throat> okay, so I have to pick a number. A um, uh, couple, couple, a uh, bit of a spiel right here before I, uh, I pick the winner. Um, this video is, be is possible by Patreon. Um, I'm just going to read it, okay? As a token of our appreciation, we're giving away this original art to a Patreon supporter. Everyone knows the Patreon guys are would keep this stuff alive. <clears throat> and the winner is, let's pick a number right here. <clears throat> Do I have to reach into a box or anything? No. Okay, so <clears throat> I just pick a number between uh, 1 and 70. Let's pick <clears throat> number 33. And number 33 is... Tyler. Tyler who? It just says Tyler. Tyler. Okay, the guy with no last name. <clears throat> Tyler is one. This Kirby drawing from last week. <clears throat> it now belongs to him. So we're going to sign it to Tyler <clears throat> to make it official. Let's grab a blue marker. I'm going to guess the spelling of his name is like so. To Tyler. Exclamation point. Congratulations on winning this drawing from the dude, based on a Jack Kirby drawing that we saw me draw last week. And uh, we're still looking for a designer <clears throat> for the Rude Dude outfit. Um, you have to be good, you have to be really good. I and mean, you have to know how to do pretty much anything that involves uh, logos, uh, designing books, uh, and everything else I can think of right now. But you have to be really good at it. So, <clears throat> What do they always say at the end of these things? Like, click, share. Okay, there I said it. And someday you're going to see me at the bottom of this thing going like this or like that. Okay, so that's it for uh, the Alex Toth segment for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time for a live stream. Take care. Adios. Bye-bye.